one of my deep learning with PyTorch tutorials. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be using this book here um, to go through and go through the book and learn how to implement deep learning in neural networks using PyTorch. Uh, there's a few things that you should know. One is that this book is available online. If you just type in deep learning with PyTorch, the book is right here in PDF form. I'm going to take my camera off now so that we can see the full screen. And here we go. So deep learning with PyTorch is, is right here. And the code, deep learning with PyTorch code is right here on GitHub. We can get on here and this one here. And you can download this whole file here. Um, you can download it as a zip and open it up in your on your computer. I've already done that, so I have all these codes downloaded. You could also run them right on GitHub, but uh, it might be easier just to download it. Uh, for the there are a few things, a few prerequisites to this course. One would be a basic understanding of how to use Python, and you can use whatever method you want to use Python. I'm personally going to be using uh, the Anaconda Navigator the in-browser window, uh, Jupyter Notebook here. I, I found Jupyter Notebook to be very good. So if you're just starting out, I think that that is a, a good way to go. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So the first one, let me restart this kernel. This is a very super short lesson here. We'll just import Torch. A uh, good hotkey to use is shift enter and check which version of torch you're using. If you don't have torch, then you're going to have to pip install it. And I'm sure there's videos online on how to do that. Uh, quickly check the tensors here. A equals torch dot ones three by three. Uh, if you want to see that, you would just type in an A here and then run it. Another method to see it would be to type in print. A and run that. And one quick thing to note, this is kind of important, is, is if, if you type in print A twice, it will print it twice. But if you type in A and then print A, how many do you think will print? Only one. No matter how many A's you type, it only uh, t takes into account the last one. So this will only give us one printed out version of the tensor. Uh, we make B the same thing. So B is a uh, three by th three uh, tensor of ones and a plus b equals that two one plus one equals two and this just tests out whether you can use your graphics card for this your CUDA uh, it might take a little longer and uh, it seemed to work there so let's step into the second one because this one is a little more tricky uh, and I'll just talk through the codes as as we go through them um, the good thing about this is that we are starting out and immediately going to the almost the top level of of the technology that's out there so from torch vision import models uh, and that now we can see all of the models that are currently in torch vision so we have access to all of these different types of uh, deep learning neural network architectures, DenseNet, AlexNet, GoogleNet, um, the ResNets, ResNet 101, ResNet 152, ResNet 18. And this, these might not make a lot of sense right now if you're not uh, familiar with them, but these are uh, very useful and we will talk more about them and you will learn more about how these architectures work and everything about them as we progress in the course. Uh, this first, or well, I guess second lesson is, is essentially just using the stuff. You don't have to understand how everything works, but 
just to get a sense of the power and to get everybody hooked on it. Uh, that's all that this one's going to be about. So now we're setting the variable AlexNet equal to models.alexnet. So it will just be equal to, to this model here. That's how we call it. Okay, now I can give a quick overview. Uh, let's look at a uh, essentially a graphic of what the AlexNet is, um, a graphical layout, a quick, a quick schematic of it, and then we'll come back. Okay, so here's a quick schematic of AlexNet. AlexNet won the ImageNet competition in 2012. It is essentially five stacks of filters, each producing a number of output images. After each filter, the images are reduced in size as annotated. Um, eventually, they are fed into three one-dimensional vectors. One of the one-dimensional vectors is 4096, the next one is 4096, and the last one is 1000. The 1000 corresponds to the number of labels within the ImageNet dataset. That means there are a thousand different categories of images to be classified to. All in all, this is a convolutional neural network architecture, and that is often abbreviated as CNN. Okay, and we're back. And now you may not understand everything about that graphic and, and all that goes into it, but that's not really important. Um, we can also see it here if we run this. This will also give us a, oops, I forgot the end here, uh, all of the, the architecture of the, of the AlexNet here, kernel sizes, um, convolutional layers, max pooling layers. So all of this, it will, we will learn all of this as time progresses, but it's important to know that this is a very uh, high tech architecture and we get to implement it on day one. So that is very cool. Uh, now we're going to grab the ResNet and we're going to actually use the ResNet for this uh, particular lesson. So here we're going to use the ResNet 101. Uh, a quick note on the ResNet 101 is that it did win uh, a competition on ImageNet in 2015. It was very, very cutting edge. Um, it essentially blew a lot of the other models out of the water. And the way it was able to do this was by uh, solving the vanishing gradient problem. So it's able to use 101 layers. Uh, other, other networks were not able to utilize deep neural network architectures uh, prior to the in, invention, I guess, of the ResNet architecture. So it, this is very new stuff. Uh, 2015 was not that long ago. So it's very cool that we're going to be able to uh, use that today and also use the pre-trained version of it. So this is the ResNet 101 that was trained on the ImageNet database, which is millions of images. Uh, let's look at the architecture of that. As I said, this may not make a lot of sense yet, but uh, as we go through the course, all of these architectures, it's actually pretty straightforward and we'll learn what all of these mean. For right now, we're just going to actually use it. So now we'll run this bit of the code here, Torch Vision, Import Transforms, and the pre-processing of the images. So the first thing we're going to do with the image here is pre-process it, okay? And we're going to resize it to 256 by 256 pixels. We're going to center crop it. So we're going to take the, the center 224 pixels, uh, transform it to a tensor, and then normalize it. So let's get this pre-process uh, sorted out. We'll run that. Um, I'm going to run this code first. I added a line here to show you guys something uh, later on. So let's take a look at this image real quick. This is the image that is uh, in this folder. If you downloaded the, the folder here, then it is, let's just go into the, into the folder actually. This was the, the folder I downloaded from the website that corresponds to the book and data. Uh, the picture will be right in here. So there's Bobby JPG. So it's just calling it. It's, it's literally just calling this image from this folder in this line. You could write out the entire directory for that, for that file, um, which I will do in a second. But for this one, it just starts with wherever your, uh, database, your output database is 
wherever your network is is working right now, your your Kodi network, and so it's just calling it from that. We're in this folder, so it's just you put the dot dot, and then it'll call it from there. Your your current directory. That's the word I'm looking for. So th this is our current directory. Is this folder, and we just go uh, to there. So we can see the image here. There's Bobby, a nice golden retriever. Um, we'll continue. Now we're going to remember the pre-processing step here. We're going to run the pre-process on Bobby's image here. And we're going to call that image T. Okay, so now we're going to import torch. We're going to batch T. And uh, this might not make a lot of sense uh, yet, but we have to do this step in order to... It's just really more part of the pre-processing of the image in order to uh, get it in the correct format to put it into our uh, convolutional neural network. So now we want to uh, call the ResNet up. Here's, uh, again, just the architecture of the ResNet 101. Uh, remember, this ResNet, we, we have that up here. We set that equal to the model that we called and downloaded, which is the ResNet 101. Um, if this is the first time you're running it as well, it's probably going to take a minute to download this. I've already ran this code, so it's already downloaded. Uh, it may take two or three minutes to download that that architecture. There are actually millions and millions of variables within the ResNet 101. So it's it's very cool that we're able to use such a high-tech uh, convolutional neural network on the first lesson. Um, so now let's let's set the ResNet our out equals the resnet of the batch t uh, so we don't need this here yet if we run that boom we did it okay so what does out look like what is what is our output we just took this image right here and fed it into our convolutional neural network the resnet 101 what does the output look like well it's going to be a 1000 uh, single dimension one dimensional unit vector and we can see that here. It'll say tensor, actually, but it's, uh, it's really just a one-dimensional vector. It just stores everything as a tensor. But this is just a bunch of numbers in a 1,000-length one one-dimensional vector. And each one of these numbers corresponds to uh, how likely it is that it is that particular category. Uh, each There's 1,000... It's a 1,000 single dimensional vector. If we look at this notepad here, this is the 1,000 uh, items that it could correspond to. So if it's a zero, if it gets a, a high value there, then it could be a tench. One would be a goldfish. And it can literally sort out any image you put into it. it, will, it we can get a probability of what it might be. And there's a ton of different things here. It might be a pug. It has all the different types of dogs, all the different types of cats. It could be a hippopotamus. Looks like it's a lot of animals, but there's more stuff in here as well. I believe there's tools, a barber shop, uh, a banjo, a band aid. I mean, so many different things. Uh, bicycle built for two, um, and it's going to classify this image as what it could possibly be. So how do we how do we read that? Right now we just have a 1,000 single dimension unit unit vector here. Uh, how do we well, first we're going to have to call this, which is our database of what the numbers correspond to. So that's what this line of code does here. First, we're going to open that text document, and then we're going to label it. Okay. And what this torch.max line of code does is it finds the maximum value. So the maximum value is which one is it most likely to be? And tensor 207. So value 207 is what it chose this image as most likely to be. Well, what is what does 207 correspond to? Um, let's scroll up to 207. And there's better ways to do this, obviously, but just so we, we fully understand if you're not that familiar with, with coding and everything. 207 responds to a golden retriever. Uh, Bobby is, in fact, a golden retriever. So that's uh, pretty incredible that it's able to, to classify that. Okay, so another method, we can take the max, but the, the better one to use is the soft max. 
And a good way to understand what the softmax is, is it is basically gonna give us a probabilistic output of how likely it is that it is corresponding to that particular one. You could almost look at it as, a, as like a confidence, a confidence bounds in statistics. It is not the same thing as the confidence bounds, but it is, is, it is similar and that's kind of how people a lot of times look at it. So according to our ResNet 101, uh, it says that there, there is a 96% chance that this is a golden retriever. Well, what else does it think it is? Where, where's the other 4%? So what we would do here in this line of code is sort out the this in, in a descending order what the top picks for this particular image were. So we run that. Uh, we have a 96% chance of it being a golden retriever, a 2.8% chance of it being a Labrador retriever, which is pretty close. Uh, it's pretty understandable. 0.2% um, that it is a English Cocker Spaniel or a Cocker Spaniel. And then down here is a tennis ball. So it's gives, it gives it a 0.1% chance that this is actually a tennis ball, which is kind of funny. It's obviously not a tennis ball. But w within the image database, there must be so many pictures of dogs near a tennis ball that it, it actually says, you know what, there's a 0.1% a chance that we don't even know what a tennis ball or a dog is, and this is uh, actually a tennis ball, which is very low, but it's kind of funny that that ends up on here as well. So what if you want to feed your own image into this ResNet 101? And uh, we can do that. And let me turn my video back on real quick. Bosco. This is my dog, uh, Bosco, real quick. Bosco, say hi to everybody. He's a good dog. I'm going to feed in an image of Bosco and see if our ResNet 101 can correctly classify Bosco as a Rottweiler. So to do that, I have an image here of Bosco. Um, it's in one of these folders here. Uh, I have the image pulled up right here. This is Bosco when he was a puppy. He's obviously a lot bigger now. He was uh, very cute when he was a puppy. He's still cute now, but he's uh, much bigger. He's like 120 pounds now. He was probably like 10 pounds in that picture. But uh, So in order to call that image... we'll have to type in this line of code here, which is image equals this particular directory calling uh, bpup. So I put a bunch of test images in here and ran them all, and uh, it was able to classify a lot of them, but this is specifically calling this picture here. Uh, one thing to note is that when you, let's just type this line of code and I'll show you exactly how I would I would do it. So now I, I go to the folder here, um, YouTube channel, I think, it, I think it's right here. So when you click here and you click copy address, you can then minimize it and put it in here, click paste, but the slashes are in the wrong direction. So it's kind of a, a weird thing, we have to go through and change all of these slashes to forward slashes rather than backslashes. And then just add on the last bit of code of whatever your uh, file name was called and make sure it's the correct file type as well. So let's rerun this. Let's see our picture of Bosco. It rotates it, but that's fine. Now we're feeding in our Bosco image right into the thing. It, it outputs this uh, one-dimensional 1,000 length vector. And now we got a 234. What do you think 234 is? 234 is a Rottweiler. It correctly classified Bosco. Uh, it only gave it a 76% chance, but that, so that's pretty low. Um, let's see what 
It might also be an Appenzeller, which I don't know what that is. Huh. A Gordon Setter, a Miniature Pincer, or a Doberman. I mean, a Doberman does look uh, a lot like a Rottweiler, so that's kind of understandable. Um, let's see what an Appenzeller is. Cheese. No, it's not cheese. It is a type of cheese as well. So that kind of looks like Bosco too. It's an Appenzell Mountain Dog. So it's got the, the similar Rottweiler eyebrows here. So it's pretty fascinating. It's fun to play with. Uh, it, you can put whatever image in here you want and just kind of see what predictions you get and start getting comfortable with the architecture. And that will conclude this lesson. Uh, thank you for watching.